Welcome to Bed the channel. Uh, please don't forget to share, subscribe our content on whatever media platform uh, that you utilize. This is a continuation of our rebuttals of a brother Muhammad named Safdar, or better known uh, with the, the terminology of brother Haji. Um, as you know, he did a number of shows wherein he more or less evidenced his uh, indigestion when it comes to the Vilayat of Ali, which um, evidence is really more of a type of Vilayaphobia that uh, he finds it unpalatable to him. So we've been addressing, um, trying to do right those wrongs, essentially, um, through our shows. Now, um, we were trying to keep it within a theme. We don't want to jump around as Brother Haji does. Um, we Last week, we addressed the topic, a specific aspect of the light, the light of prophets, the light that was testified by prophets. Haji had umbrage with that. We addressed that point. He's released a new video, which is essentially this, another source with the same reference. Since we've already provided that rebuttal last week, we don't see the sense of uh, revisiting that. He quoted a narration where previous prof prophets attested to the Vala'i of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We addressed it last week, so you can bring as many references as you want along that topic. It becomes odious for us because we've already addressed that point. But a number, uh, several points did come out through his uh, like a background, and we thought it was important to go through that. Before I do that, um, Salaam brothers, uh, Sayyid Ali and uh, Brother Abba Hassan, Salaam brothers. Um, right, now, the topics, the reason that we are actually going to address three aspects of his objections, well, okay, we've addressed the narration itself, but the three objections that he wrote, uh, he uh, decided to bring to the attention, as he said, he likes to educate the masses about Shiism. So he was educating them by posing three questions, essentially. Um, three arguments, essentially. Are the Alibad chosen? Number one. Then he discussed the verse of the Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 33. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose other new family of Ibrahim? So when, they, when, he, when the verse says they've been chosen, that means that they are the most superior. So if we bring the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, there, then that contradicts the verse. That was the second point. And third point was something that he had major indigestion over, um, that can a non-profit be excel a profit? And he found that totally unacceptable and blasphemous. So essentially what we'll do is we will, inshallah, the three objections address those. So our rebuttal of um, Haji's video is linked to those three points. Okay. Brother Sayyidali, over to you. So let me get straight to the point. We don't want to waste too much time with uh, Muhammad Naim Safdar since he's totally ignoring us. Um, at the moment, you can see he's quite occupied um, arguing and debating with his Salafi brothers. He's very quick, actually, to respond back to them. Uh, it, would, it would be nice if he gave us the due attention as well, uh, you know, since that this is, I believe, the seventh, seventh refutation and we yet to hear a single response to any of our videos. So the first point Haji brought up was that, you know, the Ahlul Bayt, they're not chosen people. Let's have a look. The Prophets and the Anbiya are the best of people. They are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the Prophets above mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preferred these chosen slaves above all of mankind. So Albani, in his authentication of uh, Sayyid Dr uh, Drimzi, Volume 3, at least number 3, uh, 3605, 3606, page number 43, quotes the following narration. So I'm just going to go straight into the, uh, uh, the, the narrator, and the narrator is uh, Wathil ibn uh, Aska said that the Messenger of Allah said, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Ismail from the children of, children of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he chose Banu uh, Kanin, Kanana from the children of Ismail, and he chose the Quraysh from Banu Kanana, and he chose Banu Hashim from the Quraysh, and he chose me from the Banu Hashim. So, as you can see, according to this tradition, the, the clan of the Holy Prophet, the Banu Hashim, they were a chosen clan, just as from the previous nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from the children of Ibrahim Islam, and the children of Ismail Islam. Likewise, he also chose from the progeny 
of the Quraysh, and he chose Banu Hashim. This hadith is uh, deemed as sahih, um, and it says uh, also, again, the same narrator says, the Messenger Allah said, indeed, Allah has chose Banu Kanana Kin Kin from the children of Ismail, and he chose Quraysh from Banu Kanana, and he chose Hashim from the Quraysh, and he chose me from Banu Hashim. And the hadith is sahih. Yeah. The next narration is from Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Muslim Ahmed ibn Hanbal, volume 28, hadith number 16,986, page number 193. And it's the same narrator, and he says, the Messenger of Allah said, indeed Allah chose Banu Qunana from the children of Ismail al -Islam, and he chose the Quraysh from Banu Qunana, and he chose Banu Hashim from the Quraysh, and then he chose me from Banu Hashim. And this hadith is sahih according to the criteria of Muslim, and this has been mentioned by uh, scholar Shoeb al -Anud. Again, let's come to another tradition. This is uh, Al-Albani in his authentication of Sunan Tirmizi, volume three, page 570, hadith number 3871. And this hadith is narrated by Umar Salma, may Allah be pleased with her, who narrated that the Messenger of Allah covered al Hassan and al Hussein. He and Imam Ali Islam, with his cloak, and then he said, Oh Lord, these are my Ahlul Bayt and my chosen ones. My chosen ones. Keep away any uncleanliness from them and purify them, a thorough purification. Umm Salam al said, I asked the Prophet of Messenger Allah, Am I among them? He replied, You are into goodness, I'm not among them. And this hadith has been graded Hassan. Uh, Sahih and al Albani authenticated it as being authentic. Now, as you can see, these are two traditions. The first tradition highlighting that the Banu Hashim were the chosen tribe. Number two, that the Holy Prophet said very explicitly that his Adil Bayt were chosen people. Again, a slightly uh, longer narration. I'm not going to read the whole tradition. It's narrated from the same wife of the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon her, Umar Salama. This hadith is Muslim Ahmed ibn Hanbal, volume 44, page number 118119, page number 26,508. And Umar Salama, uh, and I'm sure cut to the main part of the tradition. And then he surrounded them with his cloak and he bore out his hand towards the sky, meaning the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O oh Lord, these are my Ahl al Bayt al Islam and my chosen ones. Keep away any uncleanliness from them and purify them through thorough purification. O oh Lord, these are my Ahl al Bayt and my chosen ones. This is explicitly the Prophet actually mentioning it twice in the very same, same tradition, according to this event that occurred. So he's, you can see the Holy Prophet makes a very explicit statement that the Ahl al Bayt of the Prophet, they are chosen people. According to Haji, they're not chosen people. So according to Muhammad name Saftar, they're not chosen people. So now we come to Al-Hakim in his Al-Mustadrak, volume 3, page 140, date number 243. The Prophet of his blessings be upon him said, O Fatima, will you not be pleased that Allah has looked at the people of the earth and he chose two men? One of them is your father. And the other is your husband. Imam Ali Islam. Okay, so this hadith has been uh, deemed sahih, authentic, on the conditions of Bukhari Muslim. Uh, according to Bukhari Muslim, this tradition is uh, sahih according to their standards. So here, here you have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses two people, the Holy Prophet, and peace and blessings be upon him, and Imam Ali Islam. Thank you very much, Sayyid Ali. So, uh, Brother Haji, um, whose uh, unfortunate um, state of um, indigestion when it comes to life of Amir al-Mumlin and his family, he um, had a real issue with the narration uh, about the concept about the um, al-Bayt being chosen. Being chosen. He had an objection. We have evidence the fact that Rasulullah comes from a lineage that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen 
from the Bani Hashim. So he's, and the traditions that Brother Sayyid Ali mentioned evidence that. And in addition to that, so he came from a selected chosen tribe. And from that chosen tribe, we have another specific um, specialism in terms of choice. And that's Arul Bayt, those who are the people of the cloak. Again, the narrations say that they have been chosen. So if Haji has an issue with the concept of individuals being chosen, then clearly it evidences his lack of knowledge about Hadith, the literature in his own books. Because Al Bayt, the Al Bayt of Rasulullah, are chosen individuals by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul. Okay, over to you, Brother Balasan. Thank you, brothers. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that Ahlul Bayt are one of the pe chosen people of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are the Thaqalain. They are our source of knowledge. They are one of the best people of mankind. And Allah has mentioned this in the verse that Brother Hajji has mentioned. And Brother Hajji attempted to divert the question on whether they are part of this verse. And you can even see him stutter when he came to speak whether Ahl al-Bayt are included in this verse or not. Allah has chosen Adam and Noah and the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran above mankind. It's clear they've been chosen. So the Imams do not come. They are from the lineage of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one can't deny that. You can even say he when he mentions the topic, he says they are not, he stutters, and then he says, Well, the Imams are from Ahlul Bayt. But the question was whether they are included in this verse or not. And now we will come to read the verse and see what the ulama of Ahl Ahl Sunnah had to say about it. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين الله chose Adam, Nuh, the family of Abraham, the family of Imran above the alameen of their times. This is chapter 3 verse 33. أبو حيان in his tafsir البحر المحيط he mentions وقرأ عبد الله بن مسعود عبد الله بن مسعود used to recite the descendants of Sayyidina Muhammad above all people as part of the verse. And this is volume two, page 455. He says in Arabic, وَقَرَأَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنِ مَسْعُودِ وَقَرَأَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ And that is the Arabic. Now Abu Ishaq al-Thalabi, and since Brother Haji loves to read tafsir books, we'll also read tafsir books from the Sunnis as well. He says from Abu Wa'il that he said, I read in the Mus'haf of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, surely Allah chose Adam and Nuh and the descendants of Ibrahim and the descendants of Imran and the descendants of Muhammad above the nations. Tafsir al-Ta'labi, volume 8, page 248-249. Okay. So... Now in the Arabic of this reference, قرأت في مصحف عبد الله بن مسعود أن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران وآل محمد على العالمين. And this is what the Tafsir book of Thalabi says. So now we will read from Al Bukhari, the same opinion from Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas says. They are the believers of the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the family of Imran alayhi salam and the family of Yasin alayhi salam and the family of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this is in Sahih Bukhari, volume 4, page 402. And as we can see, that is the Arabic as well. And this is taken from originally At-Tabari and Ibn Abi Hatim who have chains for it. So At-Tabari mentions, I was informed by Al-Muthanna, who, who said I was informed by Abdullah ibn Salih, who said I was informed by Muawiyah from Ali, from Ibn Abbas. Rarely Allah chose Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim, the family of Amran, above the worlds. Ibn Abbas said, and now this is Ibn Abbas talking, they are the believers from the family of Ibrahim, the family of Amran, the family of Yasin, and the family of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
is Tafsir al Tabri, Volume 5, page 328. Ibn Abi Hatim also mentions I was informed by my father who said, I was informed by Abu Salih who said, I was informed by Muawiyah from Ali. From Ibn Abbas, verily Allah chose Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim, the family of Imran above the worlds. They are the believers from the family of Ibrahim, the family of Imran, the family of Yasin, and the family of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is Tafsir ibn Abi Hatim, volume 1, page 635, hadith 3414. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Abu Hassan, for that very important contribution. Brother Haji, you see, herein lies the problem, such is your indigestion and velayophobia when it comes to the uh, merits of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam and uh, the Immaculate Household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That um, in your hatred of the Shia, when you quoted that verse, you didn't bother looking at some of your own tafsirs. You simply jumped to uh, the conclusion that, and you sought to argue that, oh, well, these are the households that are superior and anyone else, any other individual who believes a household is superior, apart from these, he's essentially committed blasphemy. You know, he's, he's essentially breached a verse of the Quran. Brother Haji, Brother Haji, please, we implore you to um, consult your tafsir books. Uh, we started with Ibn Masoud, and obviously a very respected Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, highly revered in the Al-Sunnah sect. And you can see his opinion what he wrote in his manuscript, uh, his understanding of this verse. Then we've quoted Ibn Abbas, another revered uh, Sahabi, and uh, in uh, the books of Al-Sunnah wal Jama, and look what he's saying, that this verse includes the family of the Prophet. Ibn Masoud and Ibn Abbas had that opinion. So in all honesty, if you're gonna jump and accuse the Shia, you could say, okay, the Shia Rawafid are lying and making things up. So what Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masoud also Ramsi, are holding this opinion? And the verse that you so were so desperate to prove excludes the Al Bayt al Salatu Salam from excellence. It in fact includes them, as is testified by these two revered companions. Okay, so um, what we're going to now discuss is the issue of whether certain prophets, as non prophets, whether they can excel uh, prophets. Is that possible? Yes or no? This is going to be the discussion for this section. As great as Ali radiallahu anhu or alayhi salam is, he is not in the same breath or does not come close to the Anbiya. It's just common sense. He is a non-prophet. These are prophets. These are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu anhu is a righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the ten that's been given glad tidings of paradise. The cousin of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the, Alaihi Wasallam, the husband of the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many virtues. This is, the virtues are endless for Ali Radhiallahu Anhu. But one has to be frank and one has to be clear. He does not come near a prophet. Does not come close to a messenger in terms of virtues and maqam. If you believe that's the case, then in essence, you have fallen in, into ghulu, extreme ghulu, and this is what Shiaism is, in essence is. When we believe the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt al-Islam excel the Prophets um, in certain aspects, we, this is something which, to be honest with you, Bro Haji shouldn't have a, a problem with. I mean, considering the fact that he himself uh, was brought up studying in a day the institution, he should know what the statements of his own scholars are. Um, for example, Qasim the Nautavi, in his famous book, Tazir Nas, he says on page number five, the evidence for this claim is that the prophets, if they excel the Ummah, then it's in the field of knowledge. And as for good deeds, then sometimes a member of the, 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 the Ummat, or the Umti, at face value exceeds the prophet. So this is from Tazir Nas, page number five. There's a reference of a moment named Saftar Kano will go back and ask uh, Mulana Usman or uh, Mulana uh, Abu Halim. Um, again, Al Mustadrak Al Hakim, volume three, uh, 
uh, page number 136, hadith number 331, uh, is being narrated from Abi Asaq, who said, how is it that Ali inherited from the Prophet? May peace and blessings be upon him as the review. He said, because he was the first one of, first one of us who joined him, and the most intense one of us in following him and accompanying him. Uh, I'm going to skip to the next tradition. As you can see, it's been highlighted, highlighted in red. Uh, so by this consensus, it is revealed that Ali alayhi salam inherited the knowledge from the Prophet, may peace and blessing be upon him, and others were excluded. Both traditions are the uh, The first one uh, is Sahih according to Al-Hakim, uh, uh, Sahih according to the criteria of Bukhari Muslim, and uh, Zahabi says it's Sahih. So here you can see that Imam Ali was the only, the only exclusive inheritor of the knowledge of the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessing be upon him. Therefore, the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, who surpassed the knowledge of all previous prophets, Imam Ali Islam was the sole inheritor of that. And in this way, we don't just say Imam Ali Islam is better based on just normal deeds, as the statement of Qasim al Nutri, but Imam Ali Islam would excel the previous prophets based on the fact that he learned from the best of prophets. This hadith, as you can see, is appearing on your screen. Um, and hopefully, um, Brother Name Safdar can explain uh, why he has a problem uh, with this. We are going to go in more detail in later episodes when we address later videos about this particular subject, ma subject matter. But I think these two uh, quotes should suffice. Thank you, Sayyid Ali. Um, just a, a point that I just wanted to um, expand on as well the fact of the matter is, if you can imagine uh, um, a jigsaw uh, puzzle. And every single prophet um, had a role in, if, you, if we have viewed that the complete puzzle is the religion of Islam, brought, uh, delivered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through 124,000 prophets, every prophet had a role, had a mission, and they were a piece of that puzzle. But their knowledge base was not the same. Are you going to tell us that the knowledge of Nabi Adam wasalam, was the same as that of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his immaculate family? Of course not. It wasn't into the deep sciences or philosophy or knowledge base that Rasulullah had. Knowledge expanded over time. As prophets came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed them with greater amounts of knowledge. And that's why when Rasulullah came, the knowledge that he had excelled all of the other prophets. He inherited that of previous prophets and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with even more knowledge. And that's when Islam was completed, the deen was complete. And, and Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salatu wa salam, as the inheritor of the knowledge of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his immaculate family, he is the inheritor and he has, of course, acquired that level of knowledge. So yes, if you're going to say, does Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salatu wa salam, have knowledge which excels that of previous Prophets, such as Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, or other Prophets? Of course he does, because he is the inheritor of the knowledge of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there should be no objection there whatsoever. Believing in that does not constitute blasphemy. Brother Haji, epic fail yet again. As you know, we, we, are, we always like to reciprocate Brother Haji's kindness since he's fond, particularly fond of uh, citing Shia books. And in his last show, he cited two narrations. Um, it's over to Brother Abul Hassan, who will likewise um, provide a gift for Brother Haji. Brother, over to you. Thank you, brother. Uh, firstly, I'd like to read a quote from Ibn Hajar al-Makki Shafi'i al-Haytami, where he mentions the use and the evidence of weak hadiths. He says, the majority of companions do not have authentic reports in their virtues. This does not harm them. As will come that some of his, because he's talking about Muawiyah in this book, virtues are Hassan, as narrated by Tirmidhi in his Jamia. The Hassan, or good hadith, is used as evidence by consensus. In fact, even the weak or the aif hadith is used in manaqib and virtues of people as well. And this is Tatir al-Jinan wal Lisan, page 45. And if you read this book, Bro Haji, you'll realize that actually most of the book is fabrications and not authentic narrations or even weak narrations, as Ibn Hajar has mentioned. And this is Tatir al-Jinan wal Lisan, page 45. He also goes on to say, 
if you say the hadith you mentioned is a weak hadith, so how can you use it as evidence? I said, Ibn Hajar, there is agreement between our scholars of jurisprudence, usul and hadith, that weak hadith is used as evidence, hujja in manaqib, like how there is consensus in the virtues of amal. If it is affirmed that it is used as evidence, regardless of what the arrogant and jealous people say, then it is compulsory on everyone of knowledge to accept this and avoid the claim of deviance and people of falsehood. So as you can see here, he's saying that someone who rejects this concept of accepting weak hadith for virtues is actually people of deviance and people of falsehood. He goes on to say, and we, we, now we have clarified the use of weak hadith, so keep this in mind when reading this book. As I have narrated weak narrations in this book for Sahab and others. So hold on to this principle as it is sufficient evidence. However, this is on the condition none of the narrators should be attributed to fabrication or else it should not be accepted. And this is page 51 to 52 of the same book. So here, as we can realize, he's saying the narrator should not be attributed to fabrication. However, Ibn Hajar al-Makki did not stick to his own principle and placed fabrications even in this book just to prove the virtues of Muawiyah. And see how they will combine books just to defend Muawiyah and pulling fabrications. When it comes to Imam Ali, they will always um, check, make sure the chain is correct and go into extra detail just to try to prove a certain narration is weak, whereas they go against their own principles. Now let's read, for example, here. And I'll give back a gift back to Bro Haji. This narration is in Basair al-Darajat and is narrated by Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu and he said I saw the Prophet Muhammad or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I heard from him say Ya Ali O Ali Ma ba'atha Allahu nabiyan Allah did not send a Prophet O Ali Allah did not send a Prophet illa except wa qad da'ahu that he did not send a prophet, O Ali, except he called him to your wilaya. So Allah did not send a prophet except he invited this prophet to Ali radiallahu anhu's wilaya. Are you kidding me? Are you for real? You know, is this not disrespectful? This is Musnad al Firdaus. He says, The Allah Almighty said, When your Lord brought forth from the children of Adam from their lands their seed, and made them testify to themselves, saying, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes. Then he said, um, I am your Lord, Muhammad, your prophet, and Ali, your leader. Musnad al Fardos, volume 1, page 354, hadith 5066. So the same narration is actually in our books. Sunni books. Ibn Asakir, the same thing, also narrates. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that the Holy Prophet wasallam said that an angel came to me and asked me, to ask the prophets who had been sent before me as to why they were sent. I said, why were they sent? They said, on your wilaya and the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Tariq Dimash, volume 42, page 241. As we can see here, the same narrations or very similar narrations about the covenant being mentioned here as well. Al-Hakim in Ma'rifat Ulum al-Hadith also narrates the same story as Ibn Asakir, Ibn Mas'ud, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that an angel came to me and asked to me to ask the Prophet who had been before me as to why they were sent. I said, why, are they, why were you sent? They replied, on your wilaya and the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib Alayhi Salam. And this is Ma'rifat Ulum al-Din, Lil Hakim, page 316. And I'll give it back to you, Sayyid Hassan. Thank you very much, Jazakallah, bro. Thank you both for brothers today. I assume we have come to the end of our journey today. And uh, what a journey it's been. Haji, Haji, please, bro. If you're so desperate to attack Shias, why don't you try doing some research in your own books? Yet again, we, we've dealt with a number of aspects. There were three objections that you rose, uh, that you had umbrage with, and uh, we've addressed all three. And you wouldn't have had to bother yourself had you actually looked into your own texts. This was an unnecessary video, just like your other ones have been unnecessary. You're desperate to educate the audience and share your uh, uh, indigestion with the Valaya of Amir al Unfortunately, epic fail yet again. The, um, 
moral, I mean, the, the lesson that you need to learn from this is kindly look at your own works, stop pointing fingers at us, and look at yourself. Okay, brothers, Zakola for your contributions. Remember us all in your du'as as we shall remember you, dear viewers. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>